Well, what is going on YouTube? Welcome back to A Therapeutic Edge. I have <laughs> a couple of things that make me very happy on the table. Now, you guys know, or at least if you've watched my channel for a while, you know, I have a thing for old, discontinued, and interesting Benchmade knives. Um, I love their new stuff, much of it, uh, but there was a time when Benchmade is what I would call fearless. This knife in particular is an example of that. This is the Bedlam. This is both versions of the Bedlam. Uh, this is just a wicked monster knife and I absolutely love it in both configurations. You may be wondering what's the difference? Well you'll notice that this one doesn't have thumb studs and that's because this is the auto, and this is the manual. Now, before you go hunt one of these, I want to warn you right off the bat, this got cloned like crazy for a while, and so be careful. Uh, I got this one from an absolutely trusted resource, um, and I love it. The auto is really snappy. It's very cool. And I got this one from a very trusted source. In fact, I got this one with the original box with the receipt from Benchmade in the box. Uh, I traded for both of these and I traded knives that were worth well, considerably more money because I wanted, well, I've wanted a Bedlam for a long time. And once I found out about the whole cloning thing, I had a hard time just buying one at random. So uh, as tends to be the way of it, I went a couple of years not coming across one, and then within three weeks, I landed first the auto and then the manual. I haven't decided yet which one. Well, I'm going to keep them both. Who am I kidding? Uh, anyway, so let's talk about what you get. Um, both the specs are identical, except, of course, this one is automatic, which means it is not legal to carry here in California and any number of places. Uh, it is legal to own. Uh, it is legal to possess. I just can't carry it. And it is really well done. You can use one hand to open and close it. That axis lock auto action is very good. Both of them are in 154 CM blade steel, something that, um, oh, I didn't bring it. Anyway, something that Benchmade has a really good reputation for. Their 154 CM is very good. Um, let's work with the manual, since that's the one that's gonna get the most carry. Hold on, I don't want to put this one too far away. We're just going to set it up here. Come on, look at that. The Bedlam is, uh, it's a trailing point or Persian style blade. It has a very aggressive uh, grip. It has a ton of handle. This is a very, very big knife. And I, of course, I like that. Uh, this one has seen a little pocket time from the guy that owned it. Um, I'll put a link to his Instagram down below. He's got a really good uh, eBay store. Uh, so he comes across really interesting things. This, of course, being one of them. I love this knife. Now, it's not, you know, in today's world, everybody seems to love this thing. And I, I don't blame them. This is a really nice knife, but good God, is it boring compared to the Bedlam here. <laughs> so let's do the basic specs, and then we'll do some size comparison and stuff. I'm just going to put that up here where it can, you know what? I'm just gonna all right, so the Bedlam is, as I have mentioned, a monster knife. Uh, you're looking at just shy of four inches of cutting on four inches of that 154 C on blade steel. The grip area from behind that first swell is one, two, three, four and a four and an eighth inches to back. I mean, look how much room I have left. You guys know I have pretty full size hands. Overall, from tip to tail, we are coming in at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and three quarters, almost 10 inches. Uh, this is not <laughs> a subtle pocket carry. And yet, because of the way it's made, it's got a nice deep carry clip. Now you do have a fair amount of knife sticking out the back. Do I have anything to use? Excuse my arm, that'll work. Um, you know, I mean, there's a fair amount of knife sticking out the back here, right? But, interestingly enough, because of the way it's shaped, it actually rides the pocket really well. If you have deep enough pockets, uh, 
Women Carry Knives does not have a single pair of jeans except for her men's 501s that she could carry this in because it would just be in sideways and sticking it anyway. It wouldn't work. I love this thing. All right. Closed length. We're talking up. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, and three quarters. Pocket profile is actually surprisingly good. We're talking about, I mean, it is an inch and three quarters this way, but it tends to ride the pocket at this sort of angle. I don't know. I'm always surprised at how comfortable this thing is in the pocket. It's got some jimping here and a nice place for the thumb to land. Of course, because of this lovely Persian style blade. There's lots of places up here to land your finger and because of the shape you can get this thing down on the cutting surface in any number of ways before even this long tail hits the table. It's got a little bit of jimping right here, right where you'd want it. As I said, deep carry clip that is ambi, so this of course is a fully lefty righty knife. It's got a little bit of jimping back here to keep your hand from sliding off too easy and it has a very serious head knocker on the back. I know, maybe glass breaker. I don't know. But this is not messing around. Um, but this is one of their black class knives. It's designed to be sort of tactical. I really don't like that word, but here we are. Um, either one of these, depending on where you live and what's allowed where you live, would serve you remarkably well. Um, I am equally a fan of both. I will say that the automatic action on the auto here is just a little less wiggly. It does have a lock, by the way, on the auto, in case you wanted to you know, lock it closed, or in fact, open. So you can lock that up pretty well. Uh, that, of course, is a difference between the manual and the auto. But beyond that, uh, everything else is the same. I honestly don't know which one I like better. I mean, the manual's going to get, obviously, a lot more pocket time out of me, but there is something about that <laughs> that makes me really happy. Uh, both have the same nice deep carry pocket clip, as you can see, as I mentioned. A um, little unusual for Benchmade, but these are unusual knives, even for Benchmade. Um, I don't know, what do you guys think? Which do you prefer? Let me know down in the comments. I'm, oh, it doesn't even fit. Can we even get these to fit on. There we go. Hey. All right. For the size comparison portion, we're going to use the auto just because I'm going to line it up on that line. Uh, here it is again, speaking of Benchmade, a full-size grip. As you can see, the Griptilian is tiny by comparison, which of course means that the bug out is going to be equally tiny by comparison. The Bedlam here is a monster pocket knife. And I like that. I do. Uh, I remind you again, if you're going to hunt for one of these, please be careful. Not this. I haven't seen auto clones, but this manual one. I mean, first time I ever went to buy one of these uh, online, it was from somebody I didn't know. And luckily, I had the foresight to send pictures of it forward to a buddy of mine. And he said, do not do that. So you want to be cautious. Uh, both of them have the same construction. Screws go through one side and depends on the other where they are screwed tight, which means there's only a little screw up on both sides, right here. But back here, it's pins through the uh, backspacer slash head knocker. Uh, the po the uh, pocket clip. The thumb studs on the manual are very, very standard sort of bench med, bench made thumb studs, which is nice. It means you don't have to learn anything new. Uh, the ergonomics on this are surprisingly good, like I keep saying. Um, opens with a snap, closes very easily. I just wish they were still making stuff like this. I mean, I know that it's a bit of a risk in this market, right? And that's really what it comes down to. They know they're going to sell a million of these. They do. This, of course, remains one of their staples, the Griptilian, but it's actually coming to the end of its lifetime, too. They're talking about replacing this. But where are things like, you know, this, the 111H2O, super interesting knife, or, you know, the 808 Loco, just a monster and fantastic for it. If you're looking for something a little smaller, you know, there's the Lum Design Onslaught, and they made an onslaught that was as big as this Bedlam, but this Mini 
This is just a superb pocket knife, which I have been carrying and using. <laughs> I don't get it, bench babe. I don't, but hey, nobody asked me. Let's get some weights out of the way. Um, I am curious if the, I bet the auto weighs a little more, but let's find out. We'll weigh the auto out first. Ooh. The auto comes in at 7.3 ounces for an almost 10 inch knife, not bad. Four inches of CPM, excuse me, 154 CM, also not bad. So that's the auto. The manual comes, Nice. So the, the auto weighs 7.3 and the manual weighs 7.2 ounces. You're going to know you're carrying these. <laughs> yes, you are. But that's okay. There is a time for, you know, ultralight. There is. And I get that. But sometimes... Sometimes you just want a big knife. <laughs> and Benchmade had your back for a long time. I hope they bring these back. I mean, they never will. That's a fantasy, but I really do. I hope they bring these back because I think these would be fun. You know, maybe a full tie version in uh, 20 CV or, I mean, come on. Anyway, so this is the Benchmade Bedlam, a new addition to my collection and one I'm very happy to have. I hope you've enjoyed this look at them. I know I'm happy to have them. Um, and that's where we're going to leave it. The Benchmade Bedlam is a phenomenal and unfortunately discontinued bit of Benchmade history. I hope you've enjoyed this look. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.